Hello and welcome to the third part in our series on VMware Cloud on AWS. In this uh, section, we're going to cover network architecture of the SDDC. Uh, we're also going to cover SDDC interconnectivity. So if you've watched the first video in the series, you'll recall that uh, when you create SDDCs, those SDDCs actually reside in a VMware owned Amazon account. So basically every time you create a new cloud services org, we create a sub account. And then every time you create an SDDC, that SDDC resides in that sub account. So that said, um, if you recall, we walked a bit through, uh, you know, at a high level, what it looks like to deploy an SDDC. One of the steps in that process was to uh, give us a management range for the SDDC. Now, when you give us that management range and you hit the deploy button, we go off and we make calls to the Amazon infrastructure, we request hardware, and then we deploy the, the uh, SDDC. Now, what that looks like on the back end, like I said, we have a, you know, a VMware sub account in Amazon that is dedicated for your cloud services org. When you create a SDDC, the first thing we do uh, uh, go out and do is we create a new VPC in our account um, using this range that you've given us for the, the management uh, network of the SDDC. And again, this, this range here is just for example purposes. Uh, you will actually specify that range uh, on your own. So something that fits within your address uh, scheme for, for your organization. Now, once we've created this VPC, we go out and we request um, hardware for the SDDC and the number of nodes that we request is basically what you've defined in the deployer process. And so we will go out to the, infra uh, to the Amazon infrastructure, we will grab the number of hosts you've requested, we will stick them inside of this VPC, we will create a number of subnets inside of this VPC as part of the, the quote underlay. And then on top of that, we will deploy our SDDC. And so from the perspective of Amazon, this is what they see. They see a VPC with you know, some hosts that sit inside the VPC and that's, that's all they see. Now, our magic comes in where we deploy the SDDC on top of that. And so the SDDC, um, if you recall, one of the components of an SDDC is NSX. And so NSX gives us the ability to create an overlay network on top of this infrastructure. And so the structure that we create is this tiered routing infrastructure. So we have a tier zero edge router, uh, which serves as the north south um, gateway for the SDDC. And then below that, we have a couple of tier one routers. So we have one for the management network and then one for the compute network. Now, following the restrictions or the permissions uh, model of the, uh, of the SDDC, um, the management network is restricted. So this is for infrastructure. So you know, the ESX hosts have a footprint in this network. The, uh, you know, the infrastructure appliance VMs live within this network. Um, so you don't have access to alter this infrastructure back here. And what you'll note is, again, the, the, the management range you've given us for the SDC, you know, we, we use it in the VPC, but we're also using it in this management, uh, management network as well. So we're taking this range and we're carving it up into a bunch of subnets and using quite a bit of that space uh, inside the management network. Now on the compute network, um, I have again, for example purposes, showing a large slash 20 that we've allocated for this compute network. There's no such requirement to do this. You can basically create networks in the, on the uh, compute network on the fly. So these can be contiguous blocks of space, uh, you know, allocated from a larger subnet, or they can be completely discontinuous. You can come in and add and remove these on the fly. The only restriction is that they don't overlap with anything in the management range, and that they also don't overlap with anything in the uh, Amazon, um, you know, the, the VPC that we're going to cross-link to, which I'll discuss uh, here, here in a bit. So the, uh, aside from that, there aren't too many uh, restrictions. Now, security on the SDDC is handled in a couple of different places. And so the first point of enforcement we have is the gateway firewall. And this is applied in two different places. And so we have on the management network, the gateway firewall is applied to the management gateway. And so this gives us the ability to restrict uh, access from the compute network, as well as from north, south, uh, out from the internet. And so that's why we have enforced this here. Now on the compute networks, we're actually enforcing this at the T0 edge. And, you know, this is probably because in the future, you know, we're planning on, uh, you know, uh, allowing uh, additional compute networks. And so that's a, a feature that we want to be able to have at some point. And so the thought is if, if we enforce this here, then we would be able to enforce for all of them uh, 
you know, as we add them in the future. Now, today, you, you only have one compute uh, uh, network available. Uh, but again, just keep in, in mind, this is where the, the enforcement has taken place. Now, the second layer of firewalling is the distributed firewall. And so this is part of the NSX advanced feature set. And so distributed firewalls um, are enforced instead of being enforced in a centralized point, these are enforced at the VNIC level, uh, level of every VM. And so you can think of it as a tiny transparent inline firewall that sits in front of every VM. And so essentially this gives us the ability to filter not only north, south, but also east, west. And so we can filter within subnets, we can filter between subnets, it doesn't matter. And so, um, you know, one of the key differentiators of distributed firewalls, uh, you know, that it's, uh, you know, effectively decouples security policy from network design. So if you are used to a traditional environment, um, you would, you know, if this were a two tier application, you might have a web tier sitting over here and a database tier sitting over here. And because you were, you know, traditionally you can only enforce security at a centralized point, you know, your network architecture tends to reflect your security um, model. And with a distributed firewall, we basically decoupled the two. So you can take and flatten out your network infrastructure and have the security policy be completely un you know, unaffected by that. And so we've, we've got that decoupling of security and uh, network architecture. So interconnectivity. So for this portion up here, we will assume that there is some on-prem environment. This could easily be, you know, another, uh, you know, resource within Amazon, something else, you know, but for the purposes of this discussion, we'll just say it's an on-prem environment. So let's walk through what interconnectivity looks like. We'll do so from the, uh, again, from the perspective of deploying an SDDC. And so the first thing that we want to do is plan out our IP address space for the SDDC. And so right out of the gate, we, we want to make sure that we get the management network um, right the first time because this is fixed for the life of the SDDC. Once we, once you give us a management range, as you've seen previously, we're going to deploy infrastructure based on that range. So this this range is going to be fixed for the life of the SDDC. So you don't you want to get that right going uh, going into into the deployment process. Now the compute network um, complete completely uh, flexible here, but again, it's good practice to try to allocate uh, contiguous blocks of space if you can, just so that at some future point, if we you know, if we drew, uh, introduce the ability to summarize routes, then you would be able to take advantage of that. Now that said, once you've got your IP uh, address space planned out, you will have chosen a region for your deployment. Um, in your Amazon account, you will have created a VPC. Within that VPC, you will have created uh, one or more subnets, and then you will have designated one of these subnets as your cross-linking subnet. Again, we we want at least a slash 24. Uh, I show, or I mean a slash 26 rather. I, I have a, a slash 24 shown here, but we, we need at least a slash 26. Now, once you've chosen that in the deployer uh, UI, the last step is providing that management range for the SDDC. And once you do that, we are able to, to uh, build out the SDDC. Uh, again, we build it in this same AZ as this cross-link subnet. And then once that's there, if you recall from the uh, earlier presentation, we create a series of ENIs that attach this SDDC to this subnet. So all the hosts of the SDDC are cross-linked into this subnet. Now, the reason for those cross-links are so that we can do this here. And so basically we are creating a routed path from the T0 edge of the SDDC into that cross-link subnet. And so this provides us the ability to route east and west between the, the VPC and this SDDC. Now I say east-west because if you are familiar with Amazon, they are very restrictive on transit of routing. So in other words, I can't create some third VPC over here, plumb it in, and then expect to route through or transit this VPC in order to get to the SDDC or vice versa. That won't work. Um, so this connection is purely east-west. Now this connection gives us the ability in this SDDC to access workloads within this VPC or other Amazon services within this within this account. So this is our routed path and our access to the services. And again, the services you're using are billable in your Amazon account. <clears throat> now how we handle the routing for this, what you'll note is as you are creating and deleting networks on this compute network over here, you'll see that routes are being plumbed in to the main routing table of this VPC. And so that's how we handle the routing. On, on our end, we have a static route that says, hey, anything for this entire address space of the VPC, go 
this way towards that ENI. Uh, on the VPC side, um, because we never know what you're going to create or on this side, on the SDDC, we have to put in specific routes as you're creating networks. And so we will plumb in these static routes and essentially tell the VPC how to get to the SDDC. And so one of the things that we specifically want to point out is that we only support the main routing table. And so if you are, you know, taking these routes and copying them off to other routing tables, that will actually work. However, what you will run into is that this, these, route, uh, these routes for these next hop ENIs actually will change over time. And so in order to understand that, we'll talk about the edge. And so the edge, if you log into the SDDC, you will see that there are two edge appliances. Now in NSX, the edge uh, routing function is a distributed function. So that means it's distributed out across all of the hypervisors in the SDDC. However, there are a couple of centralized components uh, in the edge. Uh, so specifically the gateway firewalls and natting, things like that that can't be distributed. Um, and so these distributed processes actually run on those edge appliances. And NSX, um, you know, watches these processes, they're all uh, active on uh, edge zero by default. If something happens to one of those processes, one of them crashes or that, you know, something happens to the edge appliance, then NSX will automatically fail those processes over to the, the standby edge appliance. And if that happens, the, the you know, since the edge appliance is a VM, it, re it, it resides on a specific host in the SDDC. And so, the active edge, whatever host it resides on, is the actual ENI that it uses for uh, forwarding traffic between the SDBC and this VPC. And so, in other words, as this edge, if it were to fail over, or if we come on, uh, you know, come along and do an upgrade, and we move this edge, by definition, the ENI changes, and so therefore we update these static routes. And if we if we update these static routes, and you've copied them off to other routing tables, then you know, that change will not be reflected. You'll end up with an outage. And so you would, you would have to take care, if you plan on doing that, you have to take care of automa uh, automating the replication of these, uh, these routes to other routing tables. Now, that explains the cross-linking uh, between the SDDC and the VPC. Now, as far as connectivity into the SDDC itself, we have a couple of different means of doing this. And so, um, we have direct connect support. So in other words, you can plumb a direct connect. If you have one, uh, you can create a private VIF and you can attach it directly to this SDDC or more accurately, you can, you can attach it to the VGW that underlie, uh, underlays the SDDC, but you know, effectively you're plumbing it, plumbing it into the SDDC. Now the other option, if you don't have direct connect is IPsec VPN. And so with IPsec VPN, a couple different flavors, we've got, uh, you know, the vanilla flavor, which is uh, policy based very basic. Uh, we also have route-based uh, uh, VPNs now. And so with route-based, you essentially will create a what amounts to a VTI tunnel. So in other words, this looks like a point-to-point -point link. You put IP addresses on either end of it, and then you exchange BGP routes. And so what that gives you is the ability to um, create redundant tunnels. And so you know, if you have two devices on your side, you can create re redundant tunnels um, BGP is exchanging routes. If something happens to one of the tunnels, then the other one will take over. And you can control which is active uh, through basic BGP metrics. So you can do AS prepending, advertise meds, things like that to control which tunnel is active and which is standby. Now, the thing to point out here is that I show two routers here, but only one down here uh, for redundant setup. Now, it, you know, it's a bit misleading. Uh, you. You know, it looks like there's only one edge, but remember the edge itself is a, a distributed router. The centralized components are actually running across two different redundant edges. If something happens to one, then the one, then the other just transparently takes over. And so you logically, we only present a single endpoint, but in reality, we're, we're handling the redundancy uh, at a lower layer. So that concludes this portion of the presentation. In further sessions, I will walk through and do a console tour and show how uh, some of these things are configured. So be sure to watch for that.